Actually, if you're watching on your television at home, uh, make sure you go in and change to the highest settings. That's 2160 uh, to get the full experience here and, and see it in beautiful 4K. We've got the pumping west-northwest well running right now. Breezy trades are straight out of the east, though, so a little bit of better direction than what we saw the other day. And we've seen some great waves out there, you know, solidly in the six to eight foot range, local scale, um, Hawaiian scale. And we're seeing some bigger sets up in the 10, even occasionally bigger range. Got some second reef sets rolling through from time to time. Uh, and it looks like uh, it'll be a really fun morning to watch uh, over the next couple hours or so ahead of the WSL event at Bell. So we give you guys something to watch, guys and gals, something to watch here for the next hour and a half or so uh, and before the Bell's event kicks off in about an hour and a half or so. So, John, you've been tracking the swell closely over the last several days. Uh, what what was the storm that set this up? What are the conditions that are, are produced? Or what, what are the, the, uh, the different synoptic features that are producing the conditions we're seeing today? Yeah, thank you, Kevin. Um, Welcome all. Uh, happy Monday to you all. If you're trying to, you know, escape that that you know dredging your work week that you have laying ahead of you. Uh, glad to have you guys on to watch this. Um, yeah. So we we we've seen a series of lows move off Japan over the past several days uh, that were responsible for sending uh, the pulse that we did the Surfline Live back on Wednesday. Uh, there was another pulse between that one and now. Uh, that came in on Saturday, not as big, and then now we have another solid banger uh, that's a little bit more westerly compared to the last Surfline Live we did on Wednesday. Pretty similar in size as that one, but more westerly in direction. Um, yeah, that that basically came from just another strong low that whipped off off of Japan of, over a few days ago, um, interacting with a very strong area of high pressure, uh, creating winds in that thing as. The fetch aimed at Hawaii was ranging everywhere from you know 35 to 50 knots. The swath of wind uh, that was reaching up to 50, even 60 knots in there, uh, wasn't as large as we would like to see, uh, but it was still up to 50 knots plus. And and the most important kicker of that was the track of that storm. Uh, it, it pushed pretty much straight east for about 48 hours, uh, which is a which is what you want to see. You, uh, you want to see the storms kind of pushed more towards Hawaii than up and away. Uh, so that that has helped um, not only with the size that we're seeing here today, but also with consistency. Um, and again, like I said before, this 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 one's more westerly than the preceding pulses. Uh, and pipe loves that west northwest direction. Um, this is coming from around 295 to 315 degrees, ideal swell direction for pipe. The period two around 16, 17 seconds right now at the peak. Um, and you know, it really to tell you the truth. If, if there was a, a stronger swath of winds in there reaching 50 knots, we might be seeing something bigger, maybe even too big for pipe. So it's it's that ideal size for pipe to perform on the main reef here where it's not washing through. Um, yeah, it should be a great day of surf all day today, Kevin. Well, yeah, we've seen a, a couple of really good rides so far this morning. Um, we know that, or we believe that uh, Nathan Florence is out, Mark Healy's out, Jake Mackey's out. Jake Mackey was one of the stars of the show the other day. Caught uh, a couple of the best waves of the morning when we were live uh, this past Wednesday. Uh, so as, as replays start to come in, we'll, when good waves come through, uh, we'll show him. Uh, Mark Beatty is on it right now. He's queuing this up. We have uh, have had a couple of backdoor waves uh, mixed in with uh, some bigger pipe sets. And uh, John, is that what we can expect to see uh, over the next little while too? Should we see a mixture of back and uh, backdoor and pipe, or mostly pipe? What are you thinking? Definitely, uh, we're going to see pipeline primarily through much of today, uh, just given the period and the size of this thing, and primarily the direction. Um, but there'll be some backdoor waves thrown in thrown into the mix. that will be more of the one-off case as opposed to the norm. Um, so expect primarily pipeline and definitely through the morning, more backdoor waves start to become more prominent over the second half of the day. Um, and I, I would suspect tomorrow being kind of a half and half day. Um, so the leftovers as a ease and the period becoming a little shorter uh, with that size, I think tomorrow's gonna be a pretty good A-framey day with pipe and backdoor, uh, just as much at each either going right or left. It's really interesting to see this swell direction for this type of year. You know, typically on when we're getting into kind of the, you know, end of the season slash shoulder season, you know, we're 
especially as you get into April, I think that we most of us would call that more of a shoulder season for the North Shore. Uh, and you typically see swell direction that's a lot more north. Um, you know, north, northwest, and north. Most of the stronger storms are up around the Aleutians and the Gulf of Alaska, um, which can be really good for different spots on the North Shore, but uh, generally not necessarily for pipe. Uh, you tend to see more westerly swells through the heart of the season, December, January, into February. But we've had a really nice little run here starting oh, about, let's see, 10 days back, maybe two weeks back. We had a, a big swell. Um, it came in on a Thursday, Friday. Unfortunately, it was, it was plagued with, with mostly poor wind, um, which most of the big swells this season have been, um, unfortunately. The, you know, the, I think the exception uh, was the really big swell, that Black Friday swell at the beginning of the season. But otherwise, it's, it's been generally a poor big wave season for, for the Hawaiian Islands, I think. That is right. Yeah, it's um, unfortunately, you know, like when people hear El Nino, they 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 think it's going to be big wave madness on the North Shore. The eddies going to run. All these kind of thoughts come to mind, and we really haven't had that. You know, definitely been some XXL pulses, but not as fruitful as previous years, especially previous El Nino events. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, we never had a chance to see any of those big swells really line up with favorable conditions. Um, it's been slim pickings this season. Yeah, it's issue, you know, with uh, it, obviously El Nino and, and strong, um, I believe it was Jake Mackey on that, that last set there. Um, oh, let me skip that. Mark Healy um, on the big board. Seeing a few big boards out there actually today. But, um, you know, with, with strong to very strong El Nino events, who you think? Um, for this this year qualified as a strong El Nino event, 2015-2016, uh, very strong event, 97-98. Um, while the strong or very strong events up the odds that you see, you know, enhanced surf, XL or double, double XL surf, each El Nino is just a little bit different and it doesn't guarantee that it's going to be this epic season of big waves. You know, 20, 20, the 2016 season in Hawaii was exactly that, you know. Um, as good as it gets for, for Jaws for, you know, a six to eight week stretch from beginning of January through the end of February um, and culminating, not at Jaws, but culminating in the, in the Eddie Akal event. Uh, there, this, this season, I think, was, was the opposite, where um, didn't have as many, obviously not as many uh, XXL events as we did in 2016. Um, and, and then when, those, when we did get those big swells, we saw a lot of onshore wind, either Kona wind or northerly winds, and, and a lot of that had to do with, with that southerly storm track, which is a uh, it's kind of a calling card of, of those strong El Ninos. You see those storms, uh, more southerly based storms that sweep across the Pacific, a lot of times um, will move across the United States into the Gulf, uh, and then out in the Atlantic. We actually just released a story um, uh, called El Nino's 12,000 mile journey or the El Nino storm. Um, kind of tracking a single storm from off Japan uh, all the way through the Pacific, across the United States, into the Gulf, uh, and then into the Atlantic, and all the spots that lined up off this kind of, you know, semi-single storm, but kind of this energy that, that um, evolved everywhere from pipe uh, all the way over to, to Super Tubas, which was uh, really cool. If you haven't checked that out, please do. Um, it uh, highlights our, our, our forecast team, highlights our, our content and video team. Um, uh, Michael Waybrett put an awesome video together highlighting all those things that happened. It's really kind of interesting look at, at the storm. Oh, and we have a Skype up here in the, in the background. Uh, <laughs> even though I'm not on camera, uh, my dog just jumped up on the bed behind me, so that's always good. Um, yeah. Uh, guess John, guess John, what? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what stood out to you this, this winter, John, for Hawaii? You know, you're, you're the guy that's, that's on the, the forecast day in and day out. Um, what were the things, you know, how would you classify this winter? Um, you know, I think we'd, we'd probably both give it a, uh, maybe not a failing grade, but a, a low grade for the, for the big wave season, but for those normal spots or maybe some of the out of, way, out of the way spots you don't necessarily think of uh, when you think North Shore or Hawaii. Go. Yeah, for the norm, I, I would say it was, sub, it was subpar. Uh, when you when you want to look at the famous seven mile stretch on the North Shore and what you know uh, what they typically see during a season, um, I, I would say it underperformed. Uh, but what you were saying, Kevin, there's some other places. Uh, I'm not going to name them, but there's some other places that had some really epic days. 
Um, you know, with El Nino and the storm track uh, being further south in latitude, you know, we had a lot of fronts move through. Uh, it, it's changing up the weather and winds. So, you know, it, like you were typically seeing east northeast trade winds in Hawaii on on a regular basis. So when those trade winds are disrupted and they clock around, the winds are changing and clocking around. Oh, man, that was a bad wipeout right there. Um, yeah. I don't know. Who, I don't know who that was, but uh, let's hope he's that. Let's hope he's okay after that one. He's going to take another one here on the head. Big set rolling through right now, guys. Um, yeah. So when you see the winds move around with passing fronts, uh, it opens up the window for some other exposures of the islands to uh, to turn on. So with that said, there's also been a lot of north angled and northeast swells this year uh and during the heart of the season you don't you know you you know back to what you were saying earlier kevin about the shoulder season uh typically like in the fall and later in the spring you see more north angled swells uh that's given the storm track because the north pacific high is still very prevalent over the pacific keeping that storm track to move up and around it up around the aleutians into the gulf of alaska um but you know, it, it's it's uh, this year that high would that high would fall back into place even during the middle of the season. Um, so we we uh, we had a lot of activity that was occurring between Hawaii and California, um, setting up a lot of north northeast angle swells even during the heart of the season during January and February. So that I think stands out the most to me is that we had a lot of combo action swells coming from the northwest, but swells coming from the north and northeast. Um, so and that doesn't bode too well for a lot of spots a lot of reef breaks usually don't like a combo uh when you have that mix of swells just make things jumbled up on the reef the wave just doesn't perform how it's traditionally known to be um you know it, it, there's not a whole lot of beach breaks in hawaii it, if it was if there was a lot of beach breaks then it'd be epic crossed up combo um but unfortunately it's all it it's primarily reef breaks um that don't favor that combo but there's other areas on the island that you know maybe are not exposed to the combo but exposed to maybe a north or northeast swell when the winds clock around you got some clean conditions to go with it so um basically what was a hindrance for the typical normal spots during a winter season for hawaii uh, ended up being the treasure for some other spots that don't happen too often so you just got to do a little searching a little driving around knowing your forecast come back come back to the to the site, checking our wind forecast and what we're calling for, and then just uh, putting yourself in the right place at the right time. Yeah, it's been, um, just as you were talking, I'm watching the set, obviously, it was like a, I don't even know, 10 wave set, 12 wave set, uh, with a bunch of them capping out of the second reef and, and, and plowing through. And I think, you know, typically when we see this type of consistency and or when you see this number of waves in the set where you just have wave after wave after wave i think that goes back to your description of, of how the storm behaved and and how what the fetch was and um you know number one that uh the, that fetch the storm really took a nice track towards hawaii so that's something that we always like to see that uh, tends to enhance both size but also consistency uh, and then when the storm of the, the area of low pressure has good high pressure support um, meaning uh, the, the interaction between the low and the high, if that high, the stronger and stronger it gets, typically the, the more consistent the wind and the fetch. And, and so you see more consistent surf, more, you know, more consistent swell, more consistent surf uh, with more waves in the sets. And you can still be lowly because obviously the swell is coming from, what, this, the, the fetch was like 2,500 miles away. Is that right, John? Something like yeah. that? Yes. Yeah. Right, you get you get right the, you can get some 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 lulls, um, but then you get what you know ten to twelve wave set and still kind of semi going right now, um, but it's something that obviously catches you know your eye my eye when we're looking at these setups and when we're, when we're looking for you know the truly special swells. Um, there are just these certain things that that you can kind of pick out um, that, to tell you like oh what's the consistency of this this swell going to be. Um, and it's not like, hey, I'm, I can, I can come on and be like, yeah, there's going to be eight to ten waves in every set, and they're going to come four minutes apart. But I, I think we can get a general feel for like low, medium, high, you know, high consistency. And and um, and this one, I think we'd call probably medium to high consistency. Lots of waves in the sets 
uh, given the, the, the setup of the batch. And we'll try and we try and speak to that a lot, like in, in our forecast and our premium analysis, especially as we see a, a good looking wave here. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's cool to see it come to fruition. It's something that, that Sean Collins, our founder, uh, taught us a long time. John and I have been at Surfline for a very long time. Uh, I think between the two of us, what we're we're over forty years, right? Because you're like eighteen, is that right, John? You've been at Surfline. Eighteen. That that's correct. Yeah. 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 You know, it's uh, there's another element to add to that consistency factor, and like you just touched on, Kevin. There's there's having that track of the storm moving towards Hawaii. There's having strong high pressure support. And it was also having that pre-aggravated sea state. Um, there, was a, there, was, there was a couple other storms that moved through that same area of ocean just before it. Um, so that's another contributing factor, uh, not only to help maximize swell potential and size, but I uh, believe it also contributes to that, to, that con to that consistency factor. It's just easier transfer of energy from the atmosphere to the ocean, um, allowing basically more waves to form, bigger and more and more to form. So, uh, and that's why you're seeing here on screen, you see just lines corduroying all the way out as opposed to a flat ocean and then occasional set. Um, just been a lot of action happening in the Northwest Pacific lately. And uh, this is, uh, this is, so those that are just tuning in, uh, we're, we are, we are seeing the third of a trio. Um, we've, we've had a series of swells come in from the West Northwest. Um, the first one moved in on Wednesday uh, last week that we did a surf line or we did a pipeline live at um, and then uh, there's a, a swell that moved in on for Saturday smaller but still pretty good size uh, ripping tray winds with that one as well and now we're on our third one that's showing today here at pipeline very good direction um, from the west northwest good period for pipes to perform uh, the trades are stronger than ideal but from a good direction from the east um, those that don't know, the North Shore faces northwest. So when you're looking here at your screen, you're actually facing to the northwest as opposed to straight north. Um, so, with, and as the winds are blowing from the east, uh, if you can visualize this, it's it's a side to offshore flow uh, for much of the North Shore, um, given that northwest direction of the coastline. So, even though it's stronger than ideal, it's all it's the winds are offshore. As you can see uh, from a lot of mist being blown off the backs of these waves, probably making for those drop-ins very challenging on a wave that's already challenging. Um, those strong winds will hold you up in that lip a little bit longer than you would like, I'm sure. And and uh, so <laughs> we've already seen a few pretty epic wipeouts so far. Probably uh, played tribute a little bit to that wind holding those guys up a little later than they wanted to be. Um, but overall, it's spectacular to see uh, this wave at this size and groomed by these winds. And you can, John, you pointed this out the other day too, from this, from the backdoor angle. And Mark, if you can zoom in uh, a, a little bit once again, uh, if we go back to that backdoor angle, you can really see um, the effect of the wind and the outside. You almost, it, it, and it is fairly clean, but when you look at it from, from the pipe angle, it looks a little cleaner. And from the backdoor angle, you can start to see um, a lot of those white, the white caps uh, out on the horizon, you know, because I think we're, but east winds like 15 to 20 knots today, something like that. Uh, is that right, John? Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's going to be ripping all day today, really for the for the next several days. Um, what we have right now is that is a strong area of high pressure. It's it's the normal North Pacific high that sits out there all all year long it's uh, it's currently situated between hawaii and california so it's sitting in an ideal spot which is why it's east winds um you know as, as opposed to the high pressure if it's centered to the north of hawaii then the trades are more east northeast to northeast direction and, and that's more side to onshore even so it's sitting in a good spot over to the east of hawaii um like like i said about it's roughly it's centered roughly halfway between california and the Hawaiian Islands, uh, setting up the easterly trades, but it's strong. It's like a 1031 millibar high, just ripping trades that we're going to see. So, you know, if it was a weaker high, then it'd be pretty much pristine conditions out there. I want to give a, a shout out uh, to our man, Mark Beatty, who's on the controls. This is not like we have a, a massive team of, of people uh, switching between cameras, zooming in, zooming out. Uh, we've got one guy, Mark Beatty, who is, is uh, controlling everything, doing the replays, 
uh, talking in our ear, letting us know who's actually surfing because um, my eyes are no longer good enough to ac actually identify it off the camera. Uh, so shout out to Mark, he's doing a great job, makes this possible. Uh, and Jeff Hall too for, for putting everything together here. We, we really enjoy doing these things. We want to do them more often. So um, please like this, please subscribe to our, our YouTube channel uh, because we, we, we want to do this uh, more and more often. Uh, if, you know, today, again, if you're just joining us, we are, uh, this is a Surfline Live from the North Shore of Oahu at Pipeline. We are in 4K today. So please do make sure that uh, you are on the highest settings, the 2160 settings, especially if you're watching on your TV at home uh, to get the full clear experience. It's beautiful to see in 4K on this late season pipeline swell out of the West Northwest with breezy, but uh, pretty good direction wind, as, as John just mentioned too. We've seen uh, a handful of, of really good waves uh, throughout the morning uh, locally and uh, seeing some solid waves too, occasional second reef waves out there. Um, uh, and, and John, we just had actually a question come in from our chat and the, the question is, how does the sand moving back onto the beach um, affect the waves today? You know, obviously the sand is always uh, a talking point around pipeline, how it's impacting the waves. Uh, the quality of the waves and the makeability of the waves. So how's it, that sand impacting the surf quality today and just in general? Well, thankfully that sand's being, has, has been pushed off, you know, uh, over, over a week ago, we saw a lot of sand building up on the reef. We just had Ivan Florence on Florence, that last yeah. wave. And Mark, whenever you're ready, if you want to show that replay, whew, he's on it right away. Look at that. Oh, you're going to see it again. <laughs> it's all right. Right as I sing your praises, Mark, you just now now we're all over the place. I'm just kidding. So uh, when Mark's ready, he'll cue that replay back up. Um, but to answer the question about the sand, yes, the sand is a huge player for pipeline. Uh, you know, for those that haven't been on the North Shore, uh, the grain of sand on the North Shore is larger grain 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 pieces and they uh, they're they're able to be deposited and, or moved around much easier than finer grained sand um, so uh, and you have a usual migration let's just call it of the sand that gets deposited between Rocky Point and pipeline uh, depending on your dominant swells at the time and also the trade winds um, so you have a lot of north swells swells coming from that northeast direction especially uh, the longshore current that flows along the beach will move from, well, if looking at your screen here, from right to left. So from east to west, um, moving that sand from Rocky Point until it gets trapped up on the reef here at Pipeline and just builds out, uh, covers all the nooks and you know, fills in all the nooks and crannies of the reef itself, especially in the channel. Um, it can be pretty hazardous uh, when you know a pipeline is already shallow in its own right and then uh, add in a sandbar especially on the in section of the wave creating a closeout and when it's 10 foot uh, it you know a lot of people you'll you'll hear a lot of pros when they have interviews about pipeline you know they try to stay away from early season pipe or you know when there's just a lot of sand at it because uh, it becomes uh, pretty treacherous out there more than the wave already is so the sand will build up that pipeline and and fill in uh, the, the holes of the reef that really give the shape of the wave that that's the, you know it, it, so it changes the face of the wave you have an in section that will close out you also get a larger berm of sand on the beach it's uh, a higher berm so when the when the wave energy washes up on the beach it reflects back out you get this backwash so it's just pretty hazardous you know you, you, you'll see a pretty solid swell but the sand is built up at pipe you won't really see that many people out there they just don't want to risk it um, so what you need to clear that out, you need west swell, uh, solid west pulses, uh, start to clear that sand, pushing it back down towards Rocky Point, um, clearing it out of those holes of the reef and out of that channel. Um, and just, you know, just letting the wave do its thing on the reef itself. Uh, it, it's, you know, in early season, you know, it, the sand, you, the season usually starts out with a lot of sand. That's because during the summer, when the trade winds are blowing, it's a prevailing wind all summer, sometimes strong, and you get trade swell. The trade swell isn't big. It's not really breaking that pipeline, but there's enough of a current to slowly just bring sand down and piles up at um, pipeline and then add 
insult to injury uh, or a lot of early season swells like Kevin touched on earlier uh, are coming from a north direction and even northeast so not only do you have the trade swell and trade winds but then you have a actual longer period north or northeast swell uh, just really sweeping sand down towards pipe it builds up and it takes really a couple solid west northwest swells to, to at least take a big chunk of the sand away um, you know if we have an xxl swell move in in the early season i mean really it can happen overnight if you have a swell that size um, but usually it takes a series of swells from a regular, you know, the, a series of regular swells from the west northwest direction to clear that sand out and keep it off. Um, and with this run that we're seeing now, we've had just that. Uh, there, you know, the, the first swell, uh, you know, the swell filled in through the night. So through the night, there was there was a, there was enough of that energy that pushed a lot of the sand that was remaining from previous week. Um, cleared it out, so still had a good, still had a good, uh, a good performing pipeline on Wednesday, and then that swell plus when Saturday swell, and now this current swell, well, the reef, the reef is ready. It's primed and ready to perform out. Should a little, little body surfer action there on the inside too. You know, I like that. Um, yeah, thanks for thanks for for breaking that down. I think it's it's super interesting, like to to watch it in person on a big swell. Um, to see the current just sweeping ac across from 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 left to right on these on these more westerly swells, you know, just as as you started talking about the sand, there was a group of I don't know five or six surfers that paddled out, and you could see them just drift over. Like typic you're typically when you're you're going out to surf on a day like today, you're paddling. It's not quite up to off the wall, which would be off to the left of the screen right here. Um, but it's fairly close. It's kind of somewhere like between off the wall and, and back door. And, um, you know, you paddle out and the current takes you down oh. kind of that. Oh, and how's that way of getting blown out? We'll get a, a replay of that in just a second. Um, but I'll take you down to that, that AK channel and then, and then you're able to get out, but it's, um, yeah, that, that current can scream there on the inside. Um, so you can see how it, uh, great set here too. Let's see if we get go two for two. Probably not. Oh, we did. Some All big right, boards out there today. It. Is that Mason? No. I don't know who that was. Another another good sized board though. Probably want more paddling speed with all this wind holding you up. Yeah. But then it could <laughs> also be an like airplane sail dropping to, in. To really hold you up. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. <laughs> so uh, it's a lot of water moving. Yeah, it's uh, you know, yeah, you, you, like you guys might see a lot of people, or a lot of people will be paddling out to the left of the screen. They start paddling out there because the question would be, well, why don't they just start at the channel? Because um, you know, here at the pipeline arena, you have water that is flowing from left to right on these west swells and northwest, um, and then swell energy is also building up on the beach to the right uh, at at. Pupakea, and you have a little bit of a current coming back the opposite direction. Those two currents meet at the channel and they flow out the sea there. Um, well, it's it's to get a head start. So you would you would start uh, to you know out down in front of off the wall and back and the back door area. Like there's a rock down there. You kind of start there just to get out ahead of the beach a little bit and start getting your pet. Like you see these guys right here on screen. They started left of the screen here, but they're going to eventually make their way out to at you know to your right, they're gonna to sweep to your right and then out through the channel and then they'll be out there. Um, the reason why they start there is they wanna get out and away from the beach because at the channel, closest to the beach is very turbulent. It's just chaos. So if they can just get out ahead of that, they make their way out at least, you know, 25, 50 yards. And then when they get to the channel, then it just takes them straight out to the lineup. Well, that was, looks like it was Nate Florent, Nate and, it's a Nate and Ivan Florence show so far. We'll get a, a couple of replays here. That's been a, a good set. That, a couple different different makes and stacking up at the back here too. Uh, oh, this is gonna be a good one. Oh, a little too fast. So, Kevin, see you're on screen now. I I had this question uh, for you. You asked me this back on Wednesday with the Surfline Pipeline Live. Um, is uh, a lot of helmets out there in the lineup? What are your thoughts about Indeed. that? Um, 
Well, I, I think it's generally a, a, a good thing. Um, you know, it's interesting today, it, it's not as obvious that there's as many helmets on a day. You know, on, on that Wednesday, um, you could, they were really obvious, a lot of them, because they're they are white. You see a lot of white helmets out there, so that's pretty easy to see even when you're, when you're pulled back a bit. Um, but I think I think it's a, personally think it's a good thing. Um, it's it's similar to where I feel like where it with like heavy wave spots, whether it's whether it's pipe, whether it's cloud break on that big swell from um, a couple weeks ago, three or so weeks ago now um, at Chopes, wherever it happens to be, you see more helmets out in the lineup, and it's kind of like where we were with skiing and snowboarding twenty or so years ago, something like that, where um, you know it was. There was a time when almost nobody wore helmets, and and you're seeing just way way more. Um, but yeah, it, it 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 seems like it's been a helpful thing so far, um, a, a a good thing. It seems like it's it's not necessarily prevented injuries, but maybe prevented serious injuries in some cases. Like um, Kyle Lenny, for example, uh, during the the backdoor shootout, as we watch a couple of replays of this last set. Um, you know, Kyle Laney during the backdoor shootout, I think the first, that was the first time he'd ever worn a helmet. And um, I, I can't remember, went over, went over the falls on a, um, on, a, on a bigger set, hit his head on the reef. And, and you know, fortunately, the, the helmet protected him. You know, he still got concussed. He had to go to the hospital. He was injured, but um, he's alive. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I think it's, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's generally a good thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, you know, it's just, it's like, why, why not? If it doesn't mess up yeah. your surfing, you know, it's better safe than not even just sorry. It's better safe than dead, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I've been, you know, in many cases. Wow, that's just sad. So, uh, I got another question for you, Kevin. I'm sure a lot of our viewers out there uh, are interested. There, uh, a lot of our viewers are, that live in, on the West Coast. Uh, will this swell that we're seeing right here for the North Shore is that making its way to California? And if so, I don't know. You, when are you we gotta ask, yeah, you gotta ask Charlotte Perry that. I don't, I don't even know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I've, been, I've been off for like five days. Like I don't know. Sure, yeah, it's gonna hit California sometime. <laughs> um, yes, it, it will. Um, I don't think it's gonna be that big from what I remember about the storm. It, it was it was just a long way away. Um, so we're. You know, typically the, the, the timing from Hawaii to California is two to three days um, from that, you know, depending on the exact swell direction in, in swell period, you know, the longer period swells are going to move a little bit faster than the shorter period swells. Um, but it was a, it was a distant storm and, and um, I don't, I don't think it's going to be particularly big, especially for Southern California. I think it's, it's pretty North and um, uh, so it'll be, it'll be a little bit later this week, but I don't think it's anything major, but Charlotte Perry, if you're listening, uh, shoot me a Slack message, man. Tell me, tell me what's up. Let me know if I'm wrong. <laughs> I haven't mind with uh, <laughs> to be totally honest. <laughs> I do agree with you, Kevin. Um, I haven't been doing the SoCal forecast either or California at all. Uh, but our for our forecast team, we have we have other forecasters that are on it daily, uh, putting out that California forecast for North Central and Southern Cal, even down to Baja. Um, Oregon. So uh, get some time, check that out on our site, uh, see how this swell is going to affect your neck of the woods. Um, but I'm right there with you, Kevin. Uh, I, I, being so far away, you know, ideally we like to see the storms that are producing swells throughout the base, at least for California, push east of Hawaii. Um, this storm was at its strongest off of Japan. So that's really far away. Um, you know, I, it, it it, it does look like it'll be westerly enough to get in, you know, it, which we like to see, especially for SoCal, uh, for energy to get in past the uh, point conception. Um, but I, I would imagine this well will be on the smaller side and inconsistent. Um, but yeah, don't take my word for it. Please check out Charlotte Perry and Chris Borg and Keaton Browning, uh, Matt Kibbe. Those guys are on it for the West Coast. They are posting that forecast for you guys. So check it out. Uh, and I just got a special message from Schaller Perry. Uh, let me bring that up again. Stand by. Um, second half of this week, kind of fun, but super lowly slow between sets. So basically, what we were just saying. Thanks, Schaller. Shout out to Schaller. Thanks for saving us. <laughs> so, uh, 
Kevin, I'm going to ask you a mechanics question here at Pipeline. Um, why, why is Pipeline such a magnet on the West Northwest swells? What's going on offshore? Like, why is it all this energy coming in right here when just down the beach at Pupakea is much smaller? Well, um, I feel like I'm stealing your thunder if I'm going to talk about mechanics at all because you're <laughs> the mechanics master. Um, how's this wave too? Oh, we're going to get a replay of that in just a second. This is an insane set. Um, but as we watch just set after set pour through right now, just pumping pipeline. Oh, um, that one was heavy. Yeah. What, what we see, what we see is, um, you've got, uh, some of the, the outer reefs here in, in particular, outer log cabins will help to really focus longer period, more westerly swell. Uh, into the break here at Pipeline. So uh, you just have a, a focusing effect at, at the, those more west or northwest angled swells, at, at especially at longer periods. And we're kind of in the, the ideal swell period range right now, um, in, in my opinion, for, for, um, for size and for shape. Um, you know, typically on the, the front end of swells, when the swell period's really long, um, it's still big, but it's like it's really slabby and it's it's um, like slabbier than normal. I mean, pipe's obviously a slabby wave, um, even when it's on the mellow, quote unquote, on the mellower side. But um, particularly like when the swell period's up above 18 seconds, when you're like 19, 20, 21 seconds or so, um, it's just it gets shiftier and super slabby, really hard to make um, and just sketchy. And so a lot of times, like on the front end of swells, you know, the swell started coming up yesterday afternoons, yesterday evening a little bit, um, and it's filled in. It's obviously filled in much more overnight. Um, but this is this is the type of uh, setup that I think you and I are both looking for for the better pipe days, where the swell period's down just a little bit. It's not short by any means, but it's it's down around 16 to 17 seconds, and and a really nice swell direction. Um, with this one, I think there's even a little energy of below 300 degrees, like 295 or so, 295 to 315 degrees. Um, so just above that Kauai shadow, you know, when um, the swell direction starts to dip below around 295 degrees, you actually get some shadowing from from uh, the upstream islands. In this in this case, um, specifically Kauai. Um, but yeah, that that 295 to 310, 315 degree range is is really great for for pipe. Yeah, it's uh, you know, it in like with this swell, this swell that's running right now, it is it's a two ninety five to three fifteen degrees, which uh, is shooting just over the top of Kauai to get into the North Shore, but there is some shadowing going on if, if you make your way further to the west, like Haliva, um, and areas further uh, west of Haliva are feeling some shadowing by Kauai, um, and Maui, Maui is feeling shadowing on this swell due to Molokai and Oahu. But uh, yeah, so it's it's um, it's just it's just what you said, Kevin, it's the offshore bathymetry off pipeline. Um, you know, it's the unique shape of the reef platform around the 60 foot mark. Um, it's basically it's it's it, there's a there's a corner of the shelf that sticks out like straight out at screen here. Um, there's there's a corner of a reef platform at the 60 foot level and 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 that's that's or 60 foot depth and that's where swells really start to uh you know that that's where they they turn and bend to their final destination uh is when they cross that threshold and and especially at the periods of like 16 17 second bands um and longer uh it, so it's it's basically the, the swell coming from this direction is turning and bending around that corner and the the end destination is this particular spot on the beach here at pipeline that's it and all this all these sets you see out the back here are a product of that refraction from the offshore reefs so yeah well, it's, it's and, a beautiful product right now I'll tell you what it's been good it's, it's gotten better uh, i mean obviously we've seen some good waves all morning but it, it it seems like it's it's really kind of turned on uh just in the last i don't know 20 minutes or so i've seen a lot more, a lot more makes and um, but the sun, the sun's, sun's out, uh, hitting it. Um, that's, it's, it's a scientific fact that the surf gets better when the, when the sun hits it. <laughs> that's what's well known. Um, and so it just, yeah, it just looks, it, it looks looking beautiful right now. Um, 
Yeah, if, if you're just joining us, um, we are uh, live at, um, we're live at Pipeline, Surfline Live at Pipeline. I am uh, the Director of Forecasting at Surfline, Kevin Walsh. I'm joined by our, our primary forecaster and senior forecast manager, Jonathan Warren. Um, we are in 4K today, so um, please do make sure that you are uh, watching it on the highest setting, uh, especially if you're watching on your TV at home. Uh, go into settings and change it to 2160, so you get this full, it's beautiful 4K experience. Uh, and also, we, we appreciate you joining us here today. Uh, it's a lot of fun to, to watch Pipeline go off like this, especially this late in the season. Uh, we want to do more of these, um, you know, not, not only at Pipe, but hopefully some other spots around the world eventually too. Uh, so we appreciate your support. Please do hit that like button and uh, subscribe to our YouTube YouTube channel. Uh, very much appreciate it. Uh, cause it's been, yeah, it's been cool to see today. Okay, John, we got another question come in. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to phrase it in two parts. The actual question is, uh, will there be any third reef waves today? Um, and no. then what, what's the difference between, <laughs> right? We've got, <laughs> done, done that one. Okay, uh, so hard now. Um, and then what's the difference between, uh, the, you know, when we say pipe first reef, second reef, uh, third reef, what, what, what are we speaking to exactly when, when we start to say that? Yeah, it's, it's just a different reef platforms as you make your way out from the beach. So first reef pipe is really the main reef that everybody really knows about when you see pictures of pipe on a regular most, basis. Most of the way know, today, we're, we're seeing it at first reef too, with a couple, exactly. you know, with a handful of uh, second reef rolling so too, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, I won't interrupt you further. Second reef is, is just the next reef plat, the next platform out from first reef. It's, it's deeper, so it takes bigger ways for it to break on. Um, and there's another reef platform out past that that's that's even deeper. So it takes even bigger ways for it to break out there. And that's, uh, if you look at your screen, uh, I don't wanna say it's at the horizon. So it's 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 not, it's 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 right where the water, it starts, you know, right right where it goes from the, the light, the greenish color to the dark blue, that's about where the third reef is. So it's kind of way out there, um, but you'll see it plenty of times break through the season uh, with all the big swells that impact the North Shore all winter long. Um, and when it's breaking out there, you can pretty much rest assured that first reef pipe is washed out, at least on a regular basis on the sets. You know, you might have some waves like the smaller sets that you can still snag uh, inside on main reef when it's breaking out there, but you're probably taking some wash through sets on the head. Um, it's a lot of work for that reward. Um, second reef, it's uh, it, it's not really a full-on breaking wave. It's more of a mush burger. Um, it comes in and just kind of caps and just breaks over. But what you know, where you could catch it. So a lot of people, like you'll probably hear this phrase a lot, but it's you know, it, it's a second reef rolling. Um, so if you're able to snag one of those rolling waves through second reef that that cap enough to break. That you can catch it and then you just kind of get this roll in and you set up your line before uh, the wave really heaves and surges on that first reef to the barrel um, but you don't you don't really see too many barrels on second reef there are occasional high line barrels that'll happen out there if it's hitting the reef just right um, but it's it's more of a roll in um, and then third reef uh, i haven't really heard anybody really successfully surfing third reef um, to to score great waves um, you know you can maybe go out there and just do it for the novelty but it's uh it's it's more of a closeout out there um, with not much line um, so yeah that, those, those are your three and then beyond that it's just deep ocean the the, the shelf the shelf drops off and you know so you're so you're not having a fourth reef pipe or a fifth reef, it it's, ends at third reef uh, before it's too deep for the swells to break. Um, unless, I don't know, we get some hundred years storm and, and we are proven differently that a swell can break out past past third reef. But there are, there actually are waves that break out past third reef. It's outer log cabins though. So to a little bit to the left of the screen, so far out and to the left, you'll have waves breaking way out there uh, when it's massive. Uh, we're talking XXL, like 80 type swells. Um, you'll have waves break way out there on that that reef corner that I was telling you about in uh, about 60 foot depth, um, it, the waves will focus around that corner and break. Uh, it's met, known as a wave called outer logs. Well, yeah, so we're, you know, I think our, the, the Waimea buoy this morning is, has been kind of around six feet or so, six feet as well at 17 seconds. So this is the, the typical 
first reef day with the occasional uh, second reef go-ins, you know, for for the outer, for third reef to start breaking, you know, you, you want, I don't know, roughly double that in swell size, um, you know, 10 to 12 feet, that, that third reef is gonna, at, at a minimum, start to cap. Um, and, you know, when you, when you get the occasional capper out there, you'll get a set that'll wash through, but then things will, will kind of settle down a little bit. So it's, it's still pretty doable, but as, as you get consistent waves that are breaking out on that third reef, like you just said, John, like that's when it, it's, kind of semi-surfable, um, um, but no, you know, nobody's really surfing out third reef. You're still trying to surf the inside and, and um, it's just, yeah, it's a, it's a washing. You're just taking set or set up, to the, up on the head. Um, you know, for, for spots like outer, outer logs to, to, to break and um, like you mentioned, it's like you gotta, you know, you're doubling that size again where it's, you know, you're the, the 20 foot swell, a 20 foot of swell range at, at really long periods, you know, at least 16 to 17 seconds. We'll take a look at uh, a replay, a couple of really great waves here too. Um, things just spitting its guts out. Um, and we're gonna, we'll, we'll keep going here for, uh, we'll keep your commentary going, I think for the next 20 or so minutes. And then John and I actually, we got to get to work out to do a couple of forecasts here. Um, but we'll keep the stream, we're gonna keep the stream on for, uh, roughly another, uh, I think another 45 minutes or so uh, ahead of the Bells event. Uh, Bells event uh, should kick off this morning. Uh, that looks like probably one of the, the best days of the event window today um, with a, a good size swell running and favorable local winds expected this morning. Um, so we'll keep going here at, at Pipe uh, ahead of the, the Bells event. And uh, for those that, those surf fans that want to continue to watch uh, good to great surf, it can uh, switch over to the WSL at that point and, and um, see what will potentially be one of the, the better days in the event. Have you been Have you been checking the forecast at all, John, for for Bells? I have, and I want to give a want to give a shout out to Hugh McDowell. He is our local forecaster in Australia, uh, with along with our team. But he's the one that's doing our Bells forecasting, uh, and he is actually on site. So be looking for. Be looking for him to be on, hopefully, on the webcast uh, sometime later today. I would, I would have to say they're going to run today. It's, it's one of the bigger days uh, that's on the radar for the event window, um, and conditions are looking good for at least the morning. Uh, it looks a little problematic later in the afternoon. Uh, looks like it turns like a, to a side shore to even onshore, uh, but the morning looks clean, looks sizable. We're talking overhead sets pushing up the double overhead uh, at least first thing in the morning. The swell is going to be on the easing trend. This uh, solid swell moved in and peaked yesterday, um, and now it's on the downward trend. So uh, there should be some leftovers uh, even the next day. So after so now when we say today, it's their Tuesday. Um, so they'll be waking up to a Tuesday morning here. Um, and they'll have ways today maybe even some so yeah it's it's uh so yeah it's it's uh it, i got my dogs having a pep rally in the background right now um so <laughs> but uh it, it does look like this the surf goes a little slow for bells uh through much of the, uh, at least until maybe a fun swell for easter weekend um and then maybe something towards the end of the event window but uh overall uh I, I would say definitely maximize this first day, Tuesday. I, I would have to bet that they're on today. Yeah, I would think um, a really high likelihood that they're going at the, the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach. Um, and yeah, I think I, I would I would think they're probably uh, at a, a minimum get a half day, if not a full day in, and, and then they'll probably go again tomorrow, given uh, a, a few slow days after that, like you said, uh, ahead of what could be at least, at least fun uh, this weekend. So. We'll see how things how things shake out. Some of the, the long range models have hinted at uh, at least the possibility of a, a another good you know pretty good swell right at the end of the the, the event window, um, but a lot of uncertainty around that. You know, we uh, one model may say say uh, one thing on one particular run, another model looks completely different, so it, it doesn't foster a lot of confidence in in that forecast. But the, there's a possibility at least there, and we'll see how things shake out. Uh, roughly over the next few days or so, and and uh, yeah, hopefully they'll they get another good swell and they end with a bang. I mean, if the uh, the first three events are any indication, uh, this thing may be going the duration of, of the window to get everything done. Um, but it'd be great, you know. Obviously, with both pipe and and sunset events, um, we had 
uh, they went through the basically duration of the contest. I think Sunset ran, uh, finished out on the second to last day, Pipe finished on the last day. But both those events really got good waves, um, which, was, which was cool to see. Um, you know, Super Tubo is a little bit different, but had, um, although that last day was pretty good too, it ended up being maybe the, maybe the best day of the window. Um, so hopefully we get the, the same for Bells and, and uh, all of us surf fans get to see some, some great surfing and, and some great waves uh, throughout the event. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, they have, a, they have a pretty good schedule still ahead of them. You know, is there still Tahiti's on the menu and Fiji and Punta Roca? So I'm sure, uh, I'm sure we're going to see some epic days in there for the WSL World Tour. All right, we got uh, a replay I'm, coming up. I'm really excited that they're going. They're going to be back in Fiji this year. Um, yeah. I just um, that the the variety of ways. I know it'll probably you know unless it's like a crazy like it's just a perfect cloud break day. We'll have a, a replay. Uh, have a look at the replay here. I think this is this is Nathan again on this backdoor terrainer. Thing looks like it was just going to fill up. How's that section? Jeez, you would have wrote him off there. Yeah. Came out. Um. Yeah, I, I gosh, I hope I know I know they'll they'll probably go mostly at cloud break, um, which is great. Um, that it's an epic wave, obviously. This is the other one that kind of filled up, and I didn't think it was going to be a chance. Um, but it, I do I like I actually really like seeing the variety. I like in, in years past when they've had a mixture of, of restaurants and and cloud break. I think I want to say the last year they ran there, which was like I think it was 2016. I think, no, they didn't do any restaurants. It was all cloud break that year. Um, restaurants was really good though, because um, I kept sneaking out to surf it while I was there, uh, which, is, <laughs> which is pretty nice. <laughs> but, like, yeah, like you, you get. To, I mean, you. Yeah, you get to go this year. Um, you'll be on site for that event. Um, how how stoked are you? What are you What are you looking oh. forward to the most being there? Oh man, it's 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 a bucket list, you know. Um, like I've never been. I forecast for there. Um, but even before I was a surf forecaster, it, it was, it's been a dream trip, a dream destination for me to go. And, and, uh, so I, I, you know, it, it's, it's still, it's done until August, but man, I, I, and I'm sure the, you know, my excitement's going to grow the, the closer and closer it gets, especially when I'm on a plane. And, um, you know, I, 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 it's, I, I just can't wait to be there. You know, like to see it in person and be in the water. Um, actually, you know, see cloud break with my own eyes in person. See how, see how similar it is a reef road. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, exactly the same. <laughs> uh, it completely changed my uh, my joking view on it. But um, yeah, it's it's. Uh, I'm very excited to go to Fiji um, and and. And be there. I might be doing the same thing that you did, Kevin. Uh, when when they all go out to surf cloud break, maybe sneak over to restaurants when when there's not as many people. Try to get a few waves there. And I'll probably have a helmet on too. <laughs> just yeah, that's a just, that's a. Both those reefs are very shallow. Like cloud break is is kind of, I, I guess it's similar to pipe in the sense that it's it's pretty flat for the most part. Um, you know, you don't like you definitely don't want to aim for it and hit it, but. At the same time, it is it is relatively flat. Where like restaurants is a very live, it's very beautiful but very live coral reef um, with you know that like I think it's like stag with staghorn coral or stag coral whatever it's called, um, but like you know super sharp and and um, yeah. just you know big things sticking up and depending on the tide like it gets it gets really really sketchy at low tide like dry like li literally you know you hear dry reef a lot that that grown around a lot but it is dry um yeah i've seen even at like mid tide sometimes you see you know big coral heads sticking out of the water um there's like it's, yeah, it's, birds perching on it <laughs> yeah yeah totally um but yeah, it's, it's, yeah I'm, I'm excited for you to go i'm, I'm really excited to see um, well, I'm, I'm excited to see the whole tour there again. Because I, I, again, I think the I, I think the last time they were there was 2016, if I remember correctly. Um, but to to see the the women there this year, and after seeing the performances that um, you know, especially kind of the young guns on tour have put in at that pipe this year, in particular, like Katie Summers um, and Betty Lou and and um, Molly Picklum in Hawaii, like to see them. At Cloudbreak, 
uh, at size, hopefully, is going to be, I think yeah. this is going to be amazing. Um, the, the women have really, really stepped up uh, their performance levels in, in the last few years, I think, especially at Waves of Consequence, and um, it's going to be uh, really, really exciting to see. Yeah, I mean, especially after their performance at Pipeline, um, I mean, the way to like start the season off at such a heavy wave like Pipeline, and it's a left, you know, left just like Cloud Break. Uh, I, I would, you know, I, I think they're going to really charge Cloud Break. Yeah, you know, yeah. It, it's it's um, especially since it opens up to having some turns in there too, as opposed to just the barrel. Yeah. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> yeah, those that are just joining, uh, thank you guys. Uh, this is our Surfline live from Pipeline, and and uh, we we just had one back on Wednesday. Um, this past this past Wednesday, uh, part of a series of pulses that have been impacted uh, the North Shore and the Hawaiian Islands in general uh, over the past week. Um, but the first one moved in this last Wednesday. We had one on Saturday, and now this is the third of the trio happening right here today. It's a solid west northwest swell from around three uh, from around two ninety five to three fifteen degrees. Uh, period is uh, between fifteen to seventeen seconds, which is ideal. Those are I. Those are ideal numbers for pipeline, especially at this uh, deep water swell height. Um, we're seeing here near shore, it's around six feet of deep water swell. The buoys uh, northwest of Hawaii, buoy one. There's actually a couple of them out there to swell is up around eight feet plus, uh, but there's a little bit of decay between there and, and before reaching the North shore. Um, so we're seeing about six feet of it actually um, rolling in here on screen. Um, so good pipeline direction and period. Uh, the winds are a little stronger than ideal, but from a favorable direction from the east, uh, it's going to be pumping all day long. Uh, it's been peaking already, top, it, so it's already topped out. It's holding through, uh, like I see here, for the next few hours or so before we'll see a slight ease this afternoon um, and then coming down further through mid through the middle part of the week. Um, now, what is in store for uh, the North Shore? And the rest of the season. Um, well, we are we are a little bit late. So this is late season. We, uh, you know, this is springtime now. Uh, it, we, but March always always seems to produce. Even April, uh, even see some odd spells in May. But typically things kind of shut down by May. Um, and uh, and then you know you have to basically wait around until next season uh, for things to start ramping up. Uh, you know, in October and November. Um, but on the radar right now, uh, things are looking like they're going to slow down after this pulse um, right now in the foreseeable future. Um, you know, I, I said this is like hopefully not the last hurrah. Um, hopefully we do see more from Pipeline before uh, it's put to bed. Um, but the chances are becoming slimmer, um, especially for swells from this direction. Uh, you know, like Kevin touched on earlier in this broadcast, uh, you know, during the shoulder seasons, which is basically the fall and the spring, we see a lot of swells come from a north, more northerly direction. Um, that is because the, the, the presence of the North Pacific High uh, become, is stronger during those times of year. Just it's very strong in the summer, but they haven't really gone away fully um, in, in the fall and the spring. And they still kind of act as a blocker out there and forcing the storm track to go up and around it. Um, so we typically see uh, storms up around the Aleutians and into the Gulf of Alaska, moving around that high pressure that sits north of Hawaii. Um, so the chances of us seeing another solid swell from a west-northwest direction like we're seeing today are going to be slim, but there's still a chance. Um, so we, we could see more from Pipeline before it's, before it's done. Um, but right now on the radar, we don't see too much out there. Things look, look like it'll be quiet, definitely for the rest of March and into the first week of April. Um, but we'll keep our fingers crossed and hopefully the North Pacific will, will produce some more action. And, and speaking of producing more action, after you guys hit that like and subscribe button, uh, we're going to ask Mark Beatty to replay the Nathan Florence backdoor wave, um, I think, there is going to be a very strong likelihood that we're going to see that uh, that GoPro clip of this last wave that Mark's going to play on, on One second. YouTube channel sometime in the in the near future because uh, it was that good. John and I, I think had written them off. Uh, looked like that backdoor wave was just filling up with foam and water, and and uh, out he came. So we'll get to that in just a second after we see uh, the set roll through. See if we have any takers. See if we have any makers as well. And I wonder if Nate has a GoPro in that clip 
So we might even see from inside the barrel. I think he was. I think he had a GoPro. What, 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 what else would you do with the GoPro? <laughs> well, <laughs> like a GoPro you can... from the beach or something? Uh, <laughs> of course yeah. he has a GoPro. Well, I mean, it could be someone paddling out. Someone swimming. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's uh, so he so he definitely all right, he here has been comes. confirmed by uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Mark Beatty, who uh, seems to know everything that's going on in the water and not. And uh, it's looks like he does have a GoPro. We can there it is. It's is in his mouth. Yeah, he's carrying it in his mouth. So that's going to be probably whiteout conditions inside that barrel. Yeah. That's that's my guess. We're going to have whiteout conditions for at least a segment on that clip. But because he was that deep behind the phone ball and it came out, man, I was uh, definitely one that when I saw it live, I thought it wasn't coming out. I, yeah. All right. One so more time. Thing, Mark is, is he he's writing us notes. And, and at first when he said he did, then he did have the GoPro. It had a question mark. And, and I'm like, I'm Ron <laughs> Burgundy. Like what? What? I'm still read everything you write on the teleprompter. <laughs> what am I supposed to do with my hands? Yeah, man. <laughs> How's this wear that? Oh, wow, man! You know what? It's uh, back back door always comes to a maze, right? So it's primarily a pipeline day today, but back door will have a few gems, like you just seen, and uh, and they could be the best wave of the day. Is that one back? Is that one back door wave mixed into a hundred pipeline waves? Well, that's that's been we've had some good waves. That's that's that, that's the wave of the day so far. Uh, I'll say that 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 section that he backdoored on that backdoor wave was pretty dang impressive. You know, just just looking back at the winter itself um, and all the swells that have come through for the pipeline arena. Um, even when I was there during the WSL, I, I, I if I had to give a nod to who wore it better this winter, I would say backdoor. I, I think backdoor was was on or offered more excellent waves compared to pipeline this winter i don't know i just feel like from all the pictures that i've seen and video and um it, i just feel like it's been a backdoor season when you want to compare just those two waves backdoor and pipe yeah i mean you mentioned it earlier but it's like we have that kind of mixture of swells a lot of the, the winter where some northwest and then maybe some mixing in with some north at times and that is a a, a, a better recipe for for backdoor over, over pipeline. Yeah, yeah, a lot of those north angle swells, pipeline's horrible on north on, on, on north swells, push down towards, you know, backdoor through off the wall. And and uh, and when and like, like we talked about earlier with the sand, um, the north swells pile a lot of sand back up on the reef, but backdoor will still offer almost like, it's all kinds of almost turns into a sand point break. Um, you know, and on small days can look very snapper rocks ish, you yeah. know, uh, out little ways wrapping on that sand point, all that sand. Yeah. Uh, oh, here's a little body surfing action inside one ahead of the, oh. the main set. Well, Don, I think we, uh, maybe we'll, we'll, we'll stay on you and I, meaning we'll stay on through this, this set. And then I think we're going to, we're going to duck out here in just a minute or two uh, to get to, to work on some forecasts. We are going to continue to run this uh, Surfline Live from Pipeline for roughly the next 30 minutes or so um, until the event, 28 or so minutes until the event at Bells uh, fires up. Uh, again, if you're just joining us, um, welcome. We'll, we'll go for a little bit longer. This is Surfline Live at Pipeline. We are in 4K today, so make sure you are on the highest setting, um, uh, wherever oh. you're doing it, particularly, how is this thing? How is this way? Is he going to make oh, it? Is he, oh, go over, Mark. He's going to make it. <laughs> you got to pan faster, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Did he come out? Can we... another thing, dude. Yeah, why don't you pan it over? Come on. <laughs> nah, there, there's this board. He didn't make it. That's all his board tombstoning. <laughs> um, but despite Mark missing that wave, he's watching 4K because he's nailing everything else. Um, and uh, if sorry you guys, TV, so make sure you're in, <laughs> you're uh, you, you select the highest setting 2160, uh, particularly if you're on a TV. And uh, please do hit the, the like and subscribe button. We appreciate it. We want to do more of these. Um, and um, uh, when you hit that like and subscribe button, that, that helps us um, to do more and more. So whether that's uh, pipeline or some other 
marquee venues in the future. Uh, you can come and uh, maybe occasionally listen to John and I have a, a bit of a chin wag and, and uh, walk through a couple of forecast things. And um, yeah, uh, it's, it's fun to do. It's fun to watch this live, fun to talk to John and, and uh, make fun of Beatty, really. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Mark. You're doing an epic job, man. Thanks, guys. <laughs> thank you, Kevin. Um, and thank you all to uh, that are that have been watching. Uh, we greatly appreciate you guys viewing this, uh, checking out Pipeline on on a nice on a nice Monday or Tuesday, depending on where you are in the world. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, I think we, John and I, are going to sign off. Uh, we'll keep it running for yeah, roughly the next 25 or 27 minutes. Again, please hit that like and subscribe button. We really appreciate everyone that has joined us so far today and uh, uh, go for a little bit longer and then switch over to Bells and, and hopefully see some, some great waves over there as well. So uh, until we see or hear you guys again, aloha. Aloha. Oh, this is a good one to end it with. Come out. Oh. Oh. <laughs> right. See you, John. See you, man.